This is on Drop Rate, a series where I hunt items in Old School RuneScape within their stated rates according to the OSRS wiki. If I get the items within the rates, for example up to 10,000 lava dragons for a visage, I get to keep everything I earn during the grind. If I do not receive it, I have to give away half the loot to you guys, the viewers. With that, let's get into today's episode. Around the time the Phantom Muspa was released, I did 151 kills of the boss and safe to say I was absolutely spooned on this boss. But I always kind of wrote off the boss for on drop rate as the Venator shard is only 1 in 100 which wouldn't really make it too interesting. Later on however, I realized that the boss has a massive seed table. With a drop of 3 magic seeds being 2 in 916 or 1 in 485 as the boss drops 2 items every time it dies, which is a perfect drop rate to make things interesting. So in this video, we are killing up to 485 Phantom Muspa with the goal of seeing that triple magic seed drop. This right here is the gear and inventory I will be using to start off this grind which has a total value of a staggering 3.3 billion GP. I've actually been thinking a lot about how I can make the viewing experience easier for you guys to follow along with the grind, so you might notice that at the bottom of my screen, I now have a grey box, and this is going to live update pretty much how many kills I've done of the boss, and you will see that after the first KC, and how much value I am at at the current point. So it is going to update, for example, when I'm at 500 KC, for example, it will say Muspa X 500 and then the value of the current loot, but it won't show any of the loot, just the kill count and the loot value. It has been a while since I did the Phantom Muspa, so I will kind of have to relearn the boss, but uh, with the gear setup that I have, it shouldn't be too bad. And here we go, this is the first kill of the grind, and you will see the grey box at the bottom of my screen now start to update, and that is now Phantom Muspa, 160k, and that is the value of the loot I've got so far. We also get a frozen cash, so actually a kind of a unique on the first one. So I have been trying to use Thralls this entire time, as it is technically the highest DPS for this boss, and not bring freezers, but I realized I cannot really do that, especially when I am kind of rusty at the boss. So I just went with freezers again, and we got one extra inventory spot with removing the Book of the Dead, so we should have a bit of an easier time now. If you have never fought the Phantom Muspa before, this is pretty much how it goes. When the boss looks like this, it will run towards you and hit you with melee, freeze the boss and attack with magic. After you've done about 100 damage to the boss, it will then turn green and attack you with ranged. Attack the boss with ranged during this phase as well. Randomly, the boss will charge a magic attack that hits hard and saps your prayer. Protect magic against it to negate it. Eventually, the room will go dark and the boss will either spawn spikes that moves towards you and you have to avoid, or the Muspa will teleport around while spawning electric clouds that deal damage if walked into. At low HP, the boss teleports to the middle of the room casting a massive explosion. Stand behind any spikes to avoid this damage. The boss now has a prayer shield and you will have to destroy this by using any prayer draining techniques. In my case, I will be using Smite. Finally, after the barrier breaks, all you have to do is finish off the boss normally. Even though no RuneScape player ever has been known to scam or DDoS anyone, I prefer to stay on the safe side, which is why I use NordVPN. Have you ever used the internet? Have you ever played an online video game in your life? Even if you might not be, I am definitely one of those people who do, and because of that, I use NordVPN on a daily basis. It's honestly the easiest program I have ever used with a nice interface, and spending any time on the internet without a VPN is like being an open book to hackers and the government, which is why NordVPN offers online traffic encryption to keep all your information safe and private both on your PC and your mobile device. Devices. On top of this, Nord offers an always active threat protection to shield you from the cyber threats of everyday life, such as malware and trackers by scanning your files when downloading and potentially identifying them as threats before they can harm your device. On top of this, NordVPN has a bunch of additional perks, such as allowing you to change your location, which is me and my fiance's most used feature in our day-to-day -day life, as it lets us change to the UK to enjoy the Harry Potter movies on Netflix and to Japan when we want to watch anime, as in Sweden, the Netflix catalog kind of sucks. You can sign up right now using my link nordvpn.com slash alonescape for a great deal on a two-year plan and a 30-day money-back guarantee and try out NordVPN for free today. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video and keeping me safe during my grind to defeat a slug for some seeds.
This one single mark tile is a very special tile because when the Phantom Muspa does this attack where it teleports all around the room and spawns these clouds that actually deal damage to you, if you stand on this specific tile, you avoid everything. You don't have to do anything at all. And with that, we just hit 10 kill count on the Phantom Muspa. I am definitely still very rusty, but the money is great. We've made already over a million GP. And that is the first hard clue skull of the grind. Both the elites and hard clue skulls are very common from this boss. The hard clue skulls being 1 in 40 and elites 1 in 50. So we should get quite a lot of them during this grind. And of course the first step is a wilderness step. So I will have to re-gear this entire inventory every time that happens. So that is going to be quite a hassle. Yo, finally we get the first supply drop of the grind. These are actually not that rare, that I'm surprised it took 18 KC. The more of these that I get, I will be able to stay here longer and cut down the time of banking, which is really nice, so getting many of these is always good. And actually, because of that previous supply drop, this was now my longest trip so far of 7 kill count in one trip, and we get an elite clue scroll as well, very nice. Really game, are you going to force me to do this finally after all this time? I can't complete this elite cruise column unless I can start another slice of ham. I don't know if I have to complete it, but for this quest, I need to do the giant's dwarf quest. I have a lot of quests I haven't completed, I also have a lot of quests I have done, but specifically these two are the ones that I need for this one step, and I don't want to throw any elites away, so I guess that's what we're doing. And after all this time, 193 days on this account, I am a Giant's Dwarf Completer. So let's get that pop up and uh, get quite a lot of experience actually. Now the question is, can I complete this Elite Clue Scroll or do I have to actually complete this quest? I have now picked it up and let's see what the verdict is going to be. It seems like I have to complete another quest. And that is an Ancient Mace Unlocked, which actually is a pretty good special attack weapon for the Inferno, if I ever want to do that. Of course, I probably have better options at this point, but that is another slice of am completed. Yep, the NPC has moved to another house, so we should... Yes, we can actually complete this now. It was worth the two quests, definitely not too bad. I am going to be honest, the 8-way switches I did between my magic and ranged gear really was not too fun. It actually made me screw up a lot more than I thought, and I'm a bit rusty on quick switches, so I actually removed the ancestral hat and the eternal boots from my switches, which at the end of the day doesn't really make that much of a difference. I'm getting faster kills as I'm doing everything more clean, so at the end of it all, it is more fun and faster. Another frozen cash. Oh no way, did I just get myself stuck here? Please give me some good hits, that's a good one, 34. We have one tie left, 13 HP, I have no food left. Why am I hitting zeros all the time? Come on man, just one hit, that's all I want. No way, and it didn't even die. That's the first- <laughs> Okay, well, lesson learned, don't get stuck in a corner. And that is 500k minus. How am I going to ever financially recover from this? With my 3.3 billion gear. Now there's only really one item upgrade that I can think of that I would love to have for this grind, which is the Saurite Crossbow. To actually use the special attack of that, as I don't even have any special attack that I'm using right now, for the prayer shield at the end of the fight. But unfortunately, I don't have the money for it, and no one has one to lend me. So for now we will have to do without it. Oh, oh my god, the first Venator shard of the grind, 7 million GP, and you guys can see exactly on what KC that was, 70. That is really lucky, that's 1 in 100 of course, so we did get it slightly before. Oh, what? No way, that is literally back-to-back -back Venator shard, 2 kills, 14 million GP made, I can't be complaining. We are making absolute bank at this boss, 100 KC reached, no magic seed yet, and a frozen cash as well, nice, but look at that money, 28.5 million, 285k per kill, absolutely insane money. We have a very fast kill on our hands here, I think this could be actually my record kill ever done on this boss. Of course, my record kill is not too impressive, as I've never really made use of a Sarite crossbow on this boss. 
But let's see, what is the timer? No way! We actually missed it by one second. I oh, was fast at least. Something I haven't mentioned just yet is that this boss has a 107.5% XP multiplier, which means essentially I get a bit more than double experience while attacking this compared to, for example, a cow in Lumbridge. And that means I can get some nasty XP drops. I think the highest I've seen is like 700. Here's a small tip, but very useful one to speed up your grind a bit while doing the Phantom Muspite. You can see that the respawn timer is rather long, but if you leave the cave and go in right away, you can still see that it says 15 seconds left on the respawner. But if we go in and reset, it is spawning way before the timer. So if you do this for all your kills, you probably can raise your kills per hour by like one or two. Now keep in mind, if you're going to be resetting the room for faster respawns, you have to make sure you have enough inventory to pick all the loot up because anything that you leave in the room when leaving is going to despawn. So for example, now I have way too much supplies on the ground, I can't pick everything up, and therefore I'm not going to be resetting the room. I just did a rough estimate on how many kills I am getting an hour, and it seems like I am landing around 20, so I've been doing this for roughly 10 hours now, and we have made 44.1 million GP. So we're getting like 4.4 million an hour just killing the Phantom Muspa, but that is now 200 KC done. We have another absolutely massively fast kill going on. I really do think this is probably my record. This felt really, really quick. And we get a combat achievement, so that was definitely the fastest. 158, so we broke the two minute barrier. If I ever want to get the Muspa speedrunner though, the highest Grandmaster achievement of 1 minute and 30 seconds, it would have to be with a Sarite crossbow special attack of Ruby Bolts and also Sapphire Bolts for the Prayer Shield. Oh, I was not going to be recording more Ancient Icons, but we just got back-to-back -back Ancient Icon, look at that. More money! Let's go! Third Venator Shard in 229kc. Definitely lucky. 55 million GP made so far. That is wild. Oh, we get a combat task. Walk straight, pray true. I have no idea what this even is. Alright, let's have a look. Where is it? Uh, there it is. Kill the Phantom Muspa without taking any unavoidable da- That is quite awkward. That took me so long. I spent some time looking through all the combat achievements for this boss and I'm not really going to be focusing on doing them, but there was this easy one, Essence Farmer, I wanted to get done, which is just 10 kills in a row without leaving the session, and it wasn't too bad, just had to get a couple of supply drops and we got it done. I have to admit, I am beginning to get a bit nervous, that is 300 KC done, and we have not seen the Magic Seed drop on that kill either. And that is 185 kills left to do, and if we lose this challenge, it is going to be quite a giveaway. Oh my god, wait, is it gonna die? Wait, what? I killed it, but it got kind of resurrected? I know you can kill the boss somehow before it does the prayer shield, because I have seen people do it, but how? Is it going to be dead now? No, so it actually healed itself a bit during the shield as well, so even though I did kill it before the shield, it still had some HP after. Even though this is not the longest grind I've ever done, it's going to be, if I don't get the magic seed, around 30 hours, it is still probably the most taxing grind I have done, because the click intensity of this grind compared to many of the other ones, for example like Mithril Dragons was the longest one, but I could AFK most of it, but with this one, I have to do gear switches, I have to do prayer switches, I have to do so many things, I feel like I'm going to end up with Carpal Tunnel after this. A bit before the system update, we're now hitting 400 KC on the Phantom Muspa after this one, and we have made 81.6 million GP so far. Are we going to get the Magic Seed? No, we get a Frozen Cash, however, that is pretty good. I really wonder, if we go all the way to 485, can we make all the way up to 100 million GP? That would be quite something, just from the drops. The average KC right now is worth like 220k. So that is kind of ridiculous. No! Not this late into the grind! Ah, oh, Dragonstone, that is like 1 in 1,400 drop rates. That is a lot of the wrong seeds. Uh, I would like magic seeds, upgrade the U seeds. Just one step, please. 
It has been a while since we've had a really quick kill just with a twisted bow and tumic and shadow, and this is definitely going to be a fast one. Can it be a new record? Yes, 155 new personal best, also a very good drop on top of it. I never really keep track of my combat experience, but we are about to hit 60 million hit points experience from doing all of these on drop rate videos. I don't even know where I started when I actually began the on drop rate series, but from all the PVMing I've done, I probably gained like 30 plus million hit points experience. It is looking like we have another loss on our hands in this series. Of course, it's not over yet, but that is 450 KC done. We have 35 kills left to do, and there could always be a redemption arc. We could always get the item just at the end. 460 KC, and that is quite a drop. 470 KC, only 15 more to go. Oh my god, no way! We get the dragon fruit tree seed drop, the first one of the grind. If you're wondering why I'm freaking out, that is one in 900, one of the rarest seed drops you can get. We are up to 480 KC on the most bar. Let's finish off the last five and be done with this grind. And the verdict is going to come in very soon if I win or lose this challenge. And so finally, this is what it comes down to, the last Muspa kill. We are on 484. Let's see what the loot for the last one is going to be. Is this going to be the first on drop rate ever where I get the item I'm hunting on the absolutely final kill? I guess we'll know now in a couple of seconds. The answer to that is... No! So we made 95.8 million GP in 485 kills. And this is the entirety of the loot that I got. We have 18 frozen caches, 9 ancient icons, 16 hard clues, and 11 elites that we now have to open. Let's start off with the 18 frozen caches that we have. The loot from this is basically just the same as the boss itself. It even has a 1 in 500 chance of getting a Venator shard. Unfortunately, I forgot to remove the rune light tracker at the bottom, so you will see that for the frozen caches as well during this clip. But let's go ahead and open all of them and see how much money we can make. All of the money that I get from the frozen caches is going to go straight into the giveaway in its full form, as this is what I usually do with clue scrolls when I lose a challenge. And they have all been opened, 101 silver ore for the last one, not the best last one. And the price check for all of this loot is a total of 1.936 million. Accidentally opened the first hard clue scroll, but I'm actually going to be doing a bit of a different way of opening clue scrolls in this time. I'm going to be opening all of them and only show you guys the loot at the end, just to make it all a bit snappier, unless I get something extremely good. Oh, Tsar Kit Om Ornament Kit. Not worth a lot, but that looks really cool at least. Uh, apparently I already had one hard clue scroll in the bank from some other time, so I accidentally opened one too much. But we're going to count that in anyways for the giveaway. I don't mind, it is what it is. But let's get started with the 11 elite clue scrolls. We're going to be opening all of these on video. So, uh, let's see. Can we get any masters from these as well? It is only one in five. So really we should see quite a lot of them. More than from the hard clue skulls, but that does not seem to be the case. And we get a Mimic. Wait, you can't open this casket at the moment if it turned out to be a Mimic. Oh, okay, so I did not get... Oh, well, I got baited. No Master at all yet, so let's see. Can we get one in the last four Elite caskets? It is <laughs> honestly not looking like that's going to happen. Can we at least get a Mimic on the last one? Hey, we get a unique item, Dragon Chain Body Ornament Kit, and a Master to finish it off. This is editing a Lonescape. I have to chime in and say the Elite and Master Clue loot I can actually not show trackers of because I did not reset them. So for Masters, it says I've done like 15 in one loot and for elites it said i did 24 so i made around 2 million from elites and you will see the loot from the masters in just a second i am on a step where you need 90 fire making to complete it and i'm only 86 and i only have a kitten to chase these rats for the orange spice to boost all the four levels i need this is going to take a while but let's go ahead and open the four masters we accumulated from opening all the previous clue scrolls. The first one is 
426k would be nice. Oh, I was gonna say nice to get a mimic, but oh my god. Gilded Square Shield. I'll put the rarity of this on the screen. That has to be extremely rare. All right, it's looking good so far. It's not worth a ton, but definitely a very good unique to get. And the last one is... 259k also unique that was a great opening that was actually my second unlock on the mega rare table we have two shields the gilded square shield and the third age kai shield which i got a very very long time ago but as i lost the challenge we're going to be doing a massive giveaway in this video after calculating the loot from all the clue scrolls the frozen caches and half the loot from the must by itself we're going to be giving away 58 points eight five million gp how you join this giveaway is on the screen right now. Good luck to all of you guys who want to participate. Thank you again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. If you want to check them out, click the link in the top of the description or in the pinned comment to check it out. But until next time, guys, take care. Last episode, we had a 10 million giveaway. So let's see who is going to be the winner. And the answer is I wear boots. Big F, RSN, I wear boots. Congrats to you. And here's the 10 million GP to I wear boots. Congrats to you. And this was a free to play player. So that probably comes in handy to buy a bond.